Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to log in here as a rules coordinator and file a temporary today. Uh, so we're familiar once again with the dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and show you how to start a temporary filing. Um, from your rules work queue, similarly to how we've done a notice, if you just watched that video, we're going to add rules to a temporary filing. I'm going to start it in a different way though so you can see that there's different ways to get about doing your rules. Um, the one thing to keep in mind uh, that's the rule for putting any rules on a filing is that they have to be in accepted status. So glancing again at our rules here, uh, we see that a few of them are accepted and a few aren't. So if you ever want rules that are going to go on a filing, you have to make sure you go into edit and change your status to accepted. Um, so let's start a temporary. Let's not select any rules. We're just going to select the temporary filing. So from our drop down options, we're going to go to temporary and we're just going to say create new filing. And in here, it'll tell us where we are temporary administrative order for chapter 166. That's a good thing. And then we're going to see, I like to scroll down and just give you a lay of the land here before we go. You'll notice temporary doesn't have quite as many fields. Um, but we're going to go ahead and attack it. So here, agency approved date. This is a new name. This is the date that your agency or commissioner board either gaveled on it, voted on it, um, the commission approved it, but it has to be on or before your filing date. Uh, think of it as the date that they said this final text is good. So it can't be that your agency finalized text after you've submitted to us. Um, and then we have the handy dandy date picker. It's going to be the same date picker we see in all the system. Um, and then we have an effective date. This is the date it legally and effectively starts. And so go ahead and pick the date and time. We'll do this one. And since it's a temporary rule or otherwise known as an emergency rule, it's not effective permanently. It's effective through a maximum of 180 days. So when you go in to do your date picker, the date won't let you exceed it. So get to pick January 12th, 2018 for this example. And if you change that date, it will make you change this one, depending on if you went it forward or backwards. And then filing caption, still limited to 15 words. You can put whatever you want in there that describes the changes that you're doing in the filing. And then here, because we just jumped straight into the temporary, we didn't add any rules. There isn't anything here. So it's also not going to let you save the filing because you need rules on a filing to save it. Uh, so go ahead and into the drop down like we did on a notice. You'll see your options of all the accepted status rules um, that you have here. And if you don't see one, that's when you have to go in and make it the accepted status. And so go ahead and pick at least one rule and up to as many as you'd like. And then you'll see it populate your rule number, your rule title, and the action that you're taking on it. And then if you decide, oh, I added the wrong one, you can remove it and add another. Um, and you can add as many as you need to have your filing complete. Um, then you can have the fields that are required by statute to be on a temporary filing. We've combined some of the fields and you'll see they're required with the little red exclamation point in the corner. And again, these fields are expandable, so you can make them as big as you want. You can either type in or copy and paste from a Word document. And again, you'll see the housing impact statement. Those are for just the agencies that are required by statute to have that. If you're not, you won't see it here. And then same filing contact information again. If it's not necessarily a rules coordinator or it is, go ahead and fill out the contact of who you want your public or interested parties to contact uh, about this temporary filing. Fill that out, street address, city zip, and then their email and phone number using work um, emails. And then one of the new things, uh, we don't have the authorization page anymore, so rather than going around and having everybody authorized physical and then uploading that back to the system, you just check the box. So as a rules coordinator, when you check this box, you're verifying that your authorized signer, whose name is on file with us here at Secretary of State, has actually viewed and authorized the filing. And so that's an important box to check cannot submit without that. So check that box. It turns blue and we like that. So then going over the few buttons that we have, uh, they're getting familiar. You're going to see the save as text and once we save it for the first time then you can save it down um, or print, return to our dashboard, save which we encourage to hit often and then submit. And the submit button is the one that submits it to the Secretary of State. So when everything's good and complete and correct, 
go ahead and hit submit. And so that is what it takes to fill out a temporary filing.